I'm going to tell you about three pieces of equipment that we have in the machining and machine tool research group. So the one that's behind me now is a Makino A51NX. It's a four axis machine tool. It's very stiff. It's very precise. It was designed to make dies and molds. So it has internal cooling. It has temperature control. It has look ahead in the controller. And it's a very precise, very accurate machine. 14,000 RPM spindle, 22 kilowatts. Um, again, designed for machining of dies and molds. Another piece of equipment that we have is a Mazak VC500. Now that's a five axis machine, but in addition to the five axes that it has, it also has a laser heated hot wire deposition system. So on the same machine, on the same axis, there's a machining spindle, but also a deposition head. It uses wire fed laser heated wire fed system and can build parts and remove material from those parts in the same machine. A third piece of equipment that we just took delivery of is an Okuma machine. It's also five axes, a different configuration, and in this case, it is a laser heated blown powder system. So again, the, the deposition head and the machining head are on the same axis of the machine tool, and it opens up a whole new range of capability for part construction. The research challenges for the Machining and Machine Tool Research Group fall into three big categories. The first category is making better use of the existing installed machine base. There's lots of machines across the country that aren't being used to their full potential. So how do we make better use of them? Second big category would be what should the machines look like for the things that we want to make? So the new, new classes of equipment, new kinds of machines, uh, for the new parts that we want to make. And the third big category would be workforce development. And I mean the whole class of, of workforce all the way from people who use the equipment to people who design the equipment and start the companies that are going to build the equipment. So what does that workforce need to look like going into the future? If we think about the parts, I sort of think about them in, in three levels. And the first level would be before we started manufacturing the part at all. The second level would be during the manufacture of the part. And the third level would be after the part was completed. So if we think about before we start to manufacture the part, right now, the information is communicated between the designer and the manufacturer by geometry only. The drawing has geometry, the model has geometry, the part program that we use is geometry. But there's a lot more to it than that. I have to take into account the power of the machine, the stiffness of the machine, the surface finish, the microstructure, and all of those things matter. The capabilities of the process are, are important, and we need to think about those at the first level, during the design phase. How do we do the design incorporating the capability of the machine right then? If we talk about during the machining operation, so I have to worry about things like temperature, particularly on the hybrid machines. There's a lot of heat that's going into the process. So the heat distorts the part, the heat distorts the machine, I'm able to make the geometry that I intended to make. So the microstructure, so during the building of the part, did I create the microstructure that I wanted? Did I create the surface finish that I wanted? All of those things affect the final part and everybody's worried, and how do we check whether or not the parts that we made meet the functional requirements? We have to monitor that during the build process. The third way that we think about the parts, after the machining is done, did we make what we intended to make? So I have to inspect the geometry. We're partnered with Zeiss. Uh, did, did I, do I have parts that have porosity and inclusions in them? More or less, we want to get to a stage where once the part is done, I know that it's ready right when it comes off the machine. We call that concept born qualified. In the machining and machine tool research group, we have a lot of industry partners. I'll tell you about some of them. Uh, MSC is our partner, and their objective is to try to improve the use of the existing installed machine tool base. There are measurements that we can make 
on the machine of the cutting tools that tell us what those tools are capable of doing. So we're trying to connect the geometry of the part and the programming of that geometry with the capability of the machine to produce that geometry. So what kind of power can I use? What kind of stiffness does the machine have? What is the surface finish gonna look like? We can measure those performance capabilities ahead of time. And MSC is helping us deploy that capability across all of their users. And that's a huge fraction of the machine tool uh, shops in the United States. Um, Mazak is a partner. So Mazak is a machine tool builder and Okuma is a partner. They're a machine tool builder. Both of them have provided us with equipment that is hybrid, both additive and subtractive in the same piece of equipment. What they want to work on is what are the right parameters uh, to set for those machines to build the parts we want to build? Um, what are the right strategies for deposition and removal of material? What are the right kinds of target parts for the application of this equipment? Two other partners that we work with are software partners. So Autodesk and um, OpenMind both make NC programming software. And their objective is to try to connect the NC programming with the capability of the machine. So what should NC programming look like for hybrid pieces of equipment? And how do we connect what the machine can do with the geometry of the part that we're trying to produce? This is an important aspect for workforce development as well. So we're trying to train, trying to educate the users of the machine tools, the builders of the machine tools, the creators of the software that help us use machine tools to look at the new future that's enabled by hybrid manufacturing, hybrid machine tools, hybrid processes.